All right, Ambitions fans. Now, I know it's almost been a week um, since the episode aired Tuesday, but first off, Own uploaded episode one to their YouTube channel, uh, I want to say around maybe 4.30 or 5 p.m. today on Saturday, uh, June 22nd. Now, I don't know if this is a weekly thing, if they're going to do this each week. Personally, I think it would be a good idea for them to do that. Like, I get it. Like, you know, if they did that, it's like, well, if we upload it each week, that means we probably won't get a lot of live views due to the fact that people will be saying, well, what's the point of watching it live when I can just catch it over the weekend? I think for me, and once again, for me, uh, being a content creator here on YouTube, it actually is good because the reason I say that is if you noticed, I said that Thursday I would have the video up at the latest more and more Tyler Perry things came out. You know, we have the Oval being announced, not to mention the BET Awards, I believe, tomorrow. And uh, more news about what he's doing with BET with the Viacom deals coming out. Not to mention, you know how I do my episode reviews, trailer breakdowns, theory videos. I still have a few more to get done for the haves and the have-nots, but Veronica was the topic of discussion, so I had to get all those videos out about her. And I think that on a chill Saturday when I just slow things down, I can sit back, watch Ambitions, and just truly let it sink in. And I have to say that I think I enjoyed it more on my second viewing than I did when I originally saw it because... Um, you know, the, for episode one, there's a lot of exposition. You know, you're introduced to like over a half a dozen if not a dozen characters and i have the um wikipedia page pulled up on my ipod here while i'm doing this video because trust and believe i'm probably going to mess up some of these people's names like i might say the wrong person's name or not know them off the top of my head but i have to say that this was a good episode for what it was you know in the fact that we're introducing characters um, a lot of background, like I said, exposition. I think that this episode truly reminded me of watching Black Lightning on the CW. And if you don't watch Black Lightning, the first two seasons are on Netflix. Trust and believe, as far as I know, right now it's not connected to the whole Arrowverse, like Flash and Arrow and Supergirl. It's its own self-contained story. And the best part is you don't have to be a super a superhero savvy person to get into that series you can just watch it from episode one and fall into the story so once again black lightning check it out it's on netflix but the reason i bring a black lightning is because of the fact that the music in that show is excellent they pick the best music for different scenes old school and new new school and the same can be said for ambitions you know when you have new edition this isn't uh this isn't if it isn't love when uh rondell was uh, at Thelma's place, and as soon as I saw Thelma's place, I instantly thought about Rachel's place from Family Matters. I don't know why, but it just fit the mood. But we open up the episode, and yes, yeah, this is episode one. This this review is going to be all over the place. I want to talk about the things I like, the things that really spark my interest, and things like that. So this isn't going to be as well structured as the haves and the have-nots. Now, as the episodes go on, pretty sure they're going to be more formulaic. But for now, I'm just kind of hype off of rewatching the episode. Excited that Own put episode one on their channel, and uh, you know, see what happens from there. Which begs the question: Were are they trying to build up hype by putting it on YouTube? Is this a one-time thing who knows but um i think the opening of the episode was like a um a dream by stephanie uh robin gibbons character i think i did a video when they released a clip about tracy t uh, having an overdose and then next thing you know um evan comes in with a gun and then shoots stephanie then she wakes up so we start off with a dream Stephanie comes downstairs, we're introduced to her, Evan, and their daughter, Carly. And basically, it's one of those situations where the daughter wants to do a theater major, but, you know, her parents want her to follow in their footsteps in law. And instantly, I honestly thought, have and have not, you know, it seemed like all the young female characters were in law school. You have Melissa, you had Amanda, both dead, and Candace, of course, was in law school as well. But in this case, we're talking like a family dynasty of lawyers and attorneys. So pretty much they wanted her to fall in line. And uh, let's see. After that, they talk about Carly's boy. Is it boyfriend or just a guy that she's allegedly dating? I forgot their names. I honestly did not take notes. Mainly because I was just engrossed in the episode. I felt like if I took notes, I would just not pay attention. So, yeah. Episode two, I'll definitely take notes. Uh, then we're introduced to Amara, and I think she was in an office talking with a co-worker who I do believe was Diane Winchill from, 
Diane Winchill from the Haves and Have Nots. Uh, she was the reporter who was um, interviewing Jim when he announced he was running for governor. Then she put Celine and her kids up on the uh, television screen. So I love watching shows like this when there are Easter eggs where you see actors and it's like, wait a minute, I think I rec recognize him for another show. And uh, basically it's about a certain case that she didn't want to take. And then we get to Titus and his boss. And once again, I'm looking at my name list here. I believe it was Hunter Purifoy. Hunter Purifoy. Basically one of those situations where young, young black man. Oh, yeah. It was just an awkward situation where they just expressed the happiness that he's working with their firm now. Pretty much coming from, you know, uh, Alabama to Georgia. Because I know that Amara said she was from Texas, then Alabama, and then they moved to Georgia. Like I said, fill in the blanks if I'm wrong. Bear with me. This is episode one. There was a God, there's a lot to talk about. So then we have uh, Stephanie talking with her father. Probably one of my favorite scenes of the episode. Uh, I recently rewatched for the first time in a while A Family That Prays. I might actually have to do videos talking about the old Tyler Perry movies and plays uh, to see how they hold up especially when some of those movies have been out for over 10 years. And I think that I enjoyed it because just seeing Robin Givens' character in that movie and kind of comparing it to how she portrays herself and ambitions, pretty interesting, well-intelligent woman in a, in a, I guess you could say, a male-dominated work society. And, but in, th in some situations, it isn't her gender that is preventing her from taking over as she wants, but it's her temperament. And I think her father pointed that out. So we pretty much just have a situation where it's going to be a power play. I think, and not to do a segue, I feel like I was going to say this for the end of the video, but I think that, you know, when I first watched the episode, when I first watched the episode, it felt like there was more sex than substance. But when I rewatched the episode, I think that, you know, having a better understanding of it, I think that we're going to get a good amount of both. I mean, just thinking back to the all access episode, they were talking about, you know, uh, this being delicious, scandalous, and they're not being another show on the air like it in quite some time. Like some people, um, some of the cast were talking about uh, like it being a dynasty show and uh, dynasty was before my time. So I really didn't get into that. So I was born in 91. But I think it's interesting to have something like that nowadays. And believe it or not, I know I'm just jumping all over the place. I was in the barbershop yesterday because I took the day off from making videos. I just drove to my hometown. Remember, I'm only an hour away. Uh, I got paid. I'm just like, you know what? I posted enough videos. They're doing great. Let me get away from the laptop. And I was sitting in there getting a haircut. And I think General Hospital was on. And it was like uh, 1.45-ish. And I was like, you know what? Or, or 2 o'clock. And I thought to myself, one of these days, I might actually just sit down and watch a couple of these soap operas during the daytime. And just kind of like compare that to like the haves and the have-nots. Because obviously, that's a nighttime soap opera. And it's kind of weird because when you think about it. Um, I've never watched those shows since I was a kid. You know, when you're staying with your aunt or your your grandparents or, you know, heck, let's say if you and your mom both have the day off, you know, you're all from school, they're all from work and they're watching their stories in the afternoon and you watch them, but you really didn't get into them. I mean, sometimes I did, but not to the point where I am now where I'm reviewing them for a living. So I, I guess it's the fact that maybe there's a difference between daytime drama and nighttime. I think during the day, it's kind of like, unless you're really invested in the story, you probably don't want that much drama in the middle of the day. But then at night, it's kind of like everything's kind of slowed down. The day is over. You just want to sit back. You've been through a day of your real life drama. Now I want to watch somebody else go through some drama at nighttime. I think that's probably why I enjoyed uh, viewing this show so much. But aside from the story, I just love the camera work. Uh, the characters, you know, outfits were on point. And I think uh, Bella True, Erica Page, who I do believe is going to be portraying... Um, she's going to be in If Loving You Is Wrong. She's going to be Larry's wife. I think I'm probably going to get this wrong. I think it's Molly is the name of the character. She's, look, If Loving You Is Wrong been on for a couple months. I forgot. But I know she's going to be in If Loving You Is Wrong. And um, she is a fashion designer uh, for Stephanie. Made an amazing dress, by the way. And she's dating like a retired football player, linebacker. 
And what gets me is the fact that, my gosh, and I know once again I'm jumping around. I think one of the most awkward parts of the episode, and I don't mean awkward in a bad way, is when everyone's sitting at the tables at the charity fundraiser and, you know, everybody's looking across the room at the per- their POI, person of interest. You know, Stephanie Titus, um, Evan, Bella, um, Carly, and the daughter of the Purpafoy couple because it's Juniper and Hunter trying to see if I, I don't think I saw a daughter listed here and I, once again I'm looking at the Wikipedia page but um yeah at first I thought Titus and the daughter might have something going on but no 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 it's actually her daughter calling out Carly for not coming out of the closet then you know she licked her lips like a darn lollipop and then she walked out of the bathroom after giving her a phone number which begs the question did Carly have her phone on or did she just not have a security code because the girl like snatched her phone away and then put her number in there so I'm like yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't need a code for that. But who am I to tip? I mean, I got an iPod. I don't have a, you know, advanced cell phone. I got straight talk, guys. I don't use my phone that much. But I think Ron, Rondell, I like her personality. I mean, heck, the episode started off pretty intense. Oh, Lori. It's Lori. That's the name of the daughter. She looks familiar. Christina Kirkman. I got to look her up. I think I've seen her in another show before. But um, Rondell's personality, just she reminds me of, you know, that cousin or sister you might have that's uh, outspoken but down to earth at the same time. And uh, who's the guy that she was going off on? Uh, and like I said, bear with me. I'm looking through these names. <laughs> was it Greg? Greg Peters? Greg Peters? Yeah. But um, his personality is, you know, he wants to tear down the restaurant Thelma's place to make way for, you know, further land development. It really reminds me of the plot of Barbershop 2 back in business when um, the mate, the the alderman wanted that part of the neighborhood torn up for, you know, development and whatnot. It's pretty much, you know, the David versus Goliath story of little bit family owned business versus the titan that is the corporate america but you know i mean when he walked into that knife i'm like okay um wow that was a bit intense i didn't see that coming so basically he wants the movement i i I do like how evan lancaster is pretty much protective of his sister and i think greg said one of the best lines in the episode where he said um family could either push you forward or there'll be an achilles heel and that is actually very accurate the writing in this episode is pretty good. The dialogue, some of the dialogue really stuck out to me. Um, you could definitely see some, I guess you could say, subtle shades of elitism and shady racism. You know, like, you know, you uh, when uh, Juniper told Amara about how she's impressed, you know, people, you know, people like you who pulled themselves up by their bootstraps and then, you know, um... Hunter talking with Titus about, you know, young black man is like, you know, just glad to have you in the firm and stuff like that. It's just like, eh. but I guess everybody wants me to talk about the steamy scenes like, you know, Stephanie's wet dream in the uh, tub with Titus. And uh, of course, the ending with Evan jumping in the uh, shower of Bella. And what else was there? The beginning episode of Mara and Titus. Pretty much, you know, long story short. I remember I did videos on these before talking about, you know, Amara stepping out on Titus. But then the fact that she stole Titus from Stephanie in college, and yeah, even more on the video I did about a miscarriage, the fact that Amara, I guess you could say her and Titus were only getting married because she was pregnant, but then she lost a baby, and then she's like, you should have went back to Stephanie. So Amara, even though they moved to Atlanta to kind of rekindle their marriage after the affair, it's at the same time, you know, she's trying to get over that. Titus isn't ready to let it go. But then anytime Amara has like an emotional episode, she tries to push it back on Titus, especially with Stephanie back in the picture. So, yeah, this is a very interesting story. And then, of course, towards the end of the episode, you have the situation where Ronde- Rondell is approached by someone in the restaurant. And the question is, who is it and what are they going to do? I mean, Greg pretty much told Evan, you know, she's he's going to miss his sister. And he didn't answer him when he's like, Mister, what what are you what are you saying? Then he just leaves. And um the dinner scene where Hunter gave the five hundred thousand dollars to make it a million when um hang on. I'm trying to find these names here. When Steven took his glasses off and is like, I'm gonna kick this dude's ass before the check uh clears. 
I almost lost it. That was pretty funny. So I, I guess from this episode, um, the Perfafoy family is a medical company, you know, to make med- medication. So I'm assuming that based off this situation, they were the ones who created the opioids, which Tracy got addicted to, which caused the overdose. So there's some tension between the um, dang it, Carlise Car- Car- Carlisle. Ah, sorry, guys, I messed up the name. Uh, the cars, the Carlise family and the Purple Ford family. I think I could be wrong, but I think that's kind of the tension there. So once again, this first episode was full of a lot of tension, sex, setup, exposition. And character. Yeah, definitely character. So, like I said, I will give the first three episodes of you before I give it like a, you know, full evaluation of how I think. But, yeah, like I said, I think I enjoyed the episode a lot better during the second viewing. Uh, I think the characters all have something to bring to the table. And, yeah, like, like I said, it's only the first episode. It's like, what, 42 minutes, so you can only do so much. But if they keep up, you know, the the music which again i love the music of course new edition i always love new edition i don't know what song was playing when everyone was arriving to the gala that night but it sounded more like a more recent song but i am very out of touch with today's music i know i'm only 27 but i'm very dead set in the music i listen to i think one of the more recent songs i've listened to was last night i listened to uh sean M- M- mendez and camila senorita that was a catchy song and uh yeah, of course. Yeah, I think that's about it. But in any case, uh, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon so you don't miss out on any new content. If you would like me to do theory videos on ambitions, feel free to do so. I guess at this point after watching episode one, the only real theory I could do is what's going on with Rondell at the restaurant. You know, like who's approaching her? Is it Greg Peters? Is it someone that was assigned by Greg to rough her up? Pretty much, you know, if you want to go the haves and the have not route. Remember when Malik was sent over to Hannah's to get her to sign over the money back to Candace? We're in a situation where somebody's going to possibly rough up Rondell in order to make her sell the restaurant. But I don't believe she's going to die because I feel like it's way too soon in episode one to do so. Especially when you look at all the behind the scenes content. It seems like she's going to be in more episodes than, you know, just one and plus i really like her character it's always good to have a like a sassy character like that in a series full of i guess you could say stuffy elitist if you will but i do feel like overall there is a great cast of characters everyone has a fresh personality i can't wait to see the character growth as the series goes series goes on and uh, i think if there was one hope above anything else in this uh, series i hope that yes you know there's obviously going to be a lot of sex and everything like that but I hope that there's more substance over sex, more story over, you know, sex, because it seems that just based off this first episode, we've kind of paired off who's probably going to end up sleeping with who in by, um, behind closed doors affairs, and it's all going to hit the fan. And of course, you know, wow, I feel bad for even forgetting Stephanie pulling the gun on Evan like that, but he did kind of deal a lot of low blows talking about daddy's little girl and, you know, you love your dad more than any other man and why you aren't head of the firm and then bringing up how your head is so uh, so far up your own ass that you didn't even realize your sister's addiction. But to be fair, she did kind of, you know, hint at threatening Rondell so I can definitely see um the power struggle there and then just being married for appearances and yeah that was one of my favorite parts when Stephanie was talking to her dad it's like look I played my part marrying the mayor to get him on our side so pretty much it's almost like well uh, for lack of a better phrase a game of chess and I really do need to get back into chess again I think I was in (sighs) wait no I wasn't in chess club I knew friends who were in chess club in high school I only learned the basics but basically, it's a power play, you know, getting all these people on your side. And I think Greg pretty much broke it down for Evan. Like, you need me in your corner if you want to be the first black governor of Georgia. And, you know, Stephanie married the mayor just for the fact of getting someone like that on their side so she can eventually take over the firm. Yeah, and then not to mention she's doing things behind her father's back as well. So this is, yeah, second viewing a lot better than the first. I... 
I hope Own actually does this where they put the shows on um, YouTube. For one, it will do a lot better for me because people who are new to my channel think that I upload full episodes and I don't because, you know, I do this for a full time job and I don't need copyright strikes canceling my channel and my income. So I would love for them to do that, especially for people who don't have own because sad to say, you know, as I've been doing YouTube for uh, coming up two years this October, but I've been doing YouTube videos not full time since like 2017. And more and more people of the haves and the have nots have been telling me they've fallen out of the show, not because they chose to, but because they don't have access to own anymore because their cable providers dropped own from their package or own from their um, cable distribution altogether. So you can't even make a call to get own added to your platform. So kind of like when Tyler Perry went over to Viacom and then Viacom was dropped from direct TV. A lot of people are feeling the same towards own where they got into these shows, but <clears throat> excuse me, own was dropped from the packaging package. So they couldn't see it anymore. So they rely on um, people uploading it to their channels or other third party websites and everything like that. And I'm not going to say who does what, because I obviously don't. But you can find that uploading to YouTube will actually do a lot of people good. It makes it more accessible, meaning that the ratings will probably go up because I mean, now um, people who have owned but weren't thinking about giving ambitions a try probably were just scrolling on their computer like I was and oh I mean ambitions popped up and it's like you know what I got 42 minutes to spare let's rewatch this episode so overall um good first episode I think it was pretty decent I think that we are in for quite a story I do like how you know they're falling like the if loving you is wrong have and have not formula where you have an episode then during the end credits you have a trailer and um you know we go from there will I do trailer breakdowns and everything if you want me to I will probably do it. I will probably do trailers for Ambitions. I don't know if we got a trailer for next week's episode. I think we got like this season on Ambitions. So I really do need to get more familiar with the character names. That way my episode reviews won't be this, uh, you know, all over the place. But like I said, I want to do this video for fun because I rewatched the episode and enjoyed it. But who do you think? Will be the person that's attacking Rondell at the hospital. I mean, excuse me, the restaurant. Also, who is your favorite character so far? Uh, I think I could say that in terms of standout characters, probably Evan, because I really want to see the development with him and Stephanie's family. We've got hints of him just being, well, a pawn, if you will. And I wonder if he becomes governor, what will happen with that? Huh. That'll be interesting. It reminds me of Benson. Remember that show? Benson? That was a good show. But uh, let's see. Who else? Rondell, obviously. I just love her personality. It reminds me of my sister. Let's see. Robin Givens as Stephanie. I want to continue wa to watch this show and see, and see if Robin Givens gives me something that different from what I'm used to. When I, when I say that, you know, the power hungry, just do anything for the position she wants kind of character. I, I guess what I can say is, I want to see if Stephanie makes me feel sympathetic for her. I mean, obviously, I feel something because she lost her sister to an overdose. But I want to feel like, you know, I'm going to be sympathetic for her character trying to climb the ranks as opposed to, oh, here we go. Another black woman who's going to lie, cheat, steal and kill to get what she wants. Because trust and believe we got enough of that in, you know, media today in these shows and movies. But to see someone's journey, I think is really... I think that's the thing that will really make Stephanie uh, set, um, you know, set herself apart from other prominent black females in uh, entertainment today as ter in terms of a character, not a real person. But, you know, I do want to see her potential. I guess you could say rise to the head of her family's, uh, you know, law firm. That would be nice to see if her father gives her the thumbs up of approval and, you know, we can go from there. I know it's kind of a, uh, that that's as well thought as I could put that in the moment, because once again, I just finished the episode. So it's still fresh. Let's see. Amara. I really want to see her drive to take this new case. Titus. Let's just put it this way. They're going to sleep together. Stephanie and Titus will sleep together at some point. Come on now. And, uh, Hmm. Trying to think. Oh, Carly. And, uh, that, 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 the daughter. I just put my iPod down.
but I wonder how that's going to turn. No, no, like Stephanie, what if Carly, let's say Stephanie catches Carly with the Hunter and Juniper's daughter. How will that turn out? Will it be a Jeffrey and Veronica situation from the haves and the have nots where the parent will refuse to have um, um, a LGBT child to mess up their perfect little image, that kind of thing? So there's a lot to dissect, I have to say. But yeah, uh, guys, with that being said, that's my review slash quick thoughts about ambitions i know it was all over the place like i said if you want more videos like this feel free to let me know in the comment section below uh i enjoyed it i enjoyed it but trust and believe uh i know when greenleaf comes back and people want me to review which i will review i need to get my act together to make sure i don't screw that one up but yeah ambitions i give it a thumbs up not two i, I give it one for episode one let me give it about two more episodes and I'll really get in depth in terms of what I think. So let me know your thoughts, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you in the next video.